Hi everyone, welcome to SenseFly Academy. Today, we're going to talk about generating digital terrain models using SenseFly drones for the data collection and then processing it with Pix4D Mapper. For this, I have with me Marely and Elena from Pix4D. Hello everyone, I am Marely Giovanni. I'm technical support engineer here at Pix4D. And today we will talk, as Andrea said, about the digital terrain model and contour lines. Perfect, Marley. Thank you. Uh, from the SenseFly side, we have Anna and myself, Andrea. Good. Uh, in terms of content, we'll start more on the flight planning side. What you need to consider if your final output is supposed to be a DTM. And then Marily from Pix4D will take over to show you how to process your data step by step in Pix4D Mapper. Flight planning. So, a digital terrain model generated with Pix4D Mapper has a minimum resolution of five times the original resolution. So, your first question should be what am I looking for as a resolution on my DTM? If that is 14 centimeters or something around that, I have to fly at, at 2.8 centimeter per pixel, which is around 120 meters from the ground or 400 feet with EB Plus and the SODA camera. If you're also interested in generating the contour lines based on the DTM, it's good to already know what your min and max is of the terrain that you're gonna map um, in order to already adjust uh, certain steps uh, in terms of the intervals or how much cleaning needs to be done on that side. In general, if it's complex terrain, take that into consideration. Complex terrain, I mean either mountainous, uh, very flat but a lot of vegetation, any high obstacles, take that into consideration when flight planning. Of course, choosing good flight weather if you can um, is always good. Download the background map before you go outside and make sure to have all the authorizations needed and fly according to regulations. From a very planning, flight planning point of view, it's best to have all images, mainly orthogonal. Um, <clears throat> oblique images or images that are not in a 90 degree angle to the surface might introduce some error which may not make your ortho mosaic at the end look so well. So preferably fly as much orthogonal images as possible. As you can see here, I have activated the perpendicular option which might also help you to have a better and more data from different sites. Let's look at this quickly in eMotion. Okay, DTM webinar. Okay, so I already did some flight planning here. <clears throat> we can do some just next to it. So the idea is to just drop a horizontal mapping block like this one here, you can change its shape as you see. And then on the settings, you can specify everything that you need, your resolution, your overlap settings, where if you go under advanced, there you will find the perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines, be careful, they double your flight time for that area and also the amount of images. So you may even be able here to reduce the overlap a bit. That will be, that will be plenty enough for this area. <clears throat> then with perpendicular, it's important that you're mainly in a more or less flat area. Otherwise, right, remember we're planning here above elevation data. If we are planning, if we have perpendicular lines looking towards a slope or very slopey terrain, you are going to have, yeah, you will stay at the same altitude of flight, but therefore be further away from the ground means you have different resolutions in your images, which might influence the accuracy of your data set. So better to keep perpendicular lines for just sort of 
normal terrain, uh, not too steep. If it's very steep, it's preferably that you keep it without perpendicular, but therefore just increase the lateral overlap like this. Good. Then, then apart from setting up your start and landings, etc., um, there is not much more to take into consideration for your flight planning missions if you want to generate a DTM. And with this, I hand over to Marily. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea. So. What we will talk about today is about digital terrain model and contour lines in Pix4D software. So I want to bring this slide to your attention just to understand a bit the difference between a digital surface model, a DSM as we call it, and a digital terrain model or DTM. So as you see here on the DSM, the elevation is color encoded and whatever will appear in your images and in your point cloud will also be visible on the DSM. On the other hand, for the DTM, only the points that belong to the terrain layer will be visible. As you can see here, for example, the cars, they are not in the DTM anymore. How can we do this in Pix4D software? In Pix4D, we can generate the DTM automatically based on point cloud classification. Our point cloud classification is based on machine learning techniques. We will also see it in the software after I finish the presentation. So I will show you live how you can do it yourself. When you run step two, uh, you will see that there will be an option how to uh, generate the point cloud classification. As soon as you process step two with this uh, option selected, you will see that each point will automatically be classified in predefined groups. As you will see, this is a a screenshot of the left side sidebar in Pix4D software. The classes are already defined, and as you will see, it will be the unclassified, the disabled group, ground, that is, uh, it has a color yellow, road surface, gray, high vegetation, building, and human-made object. We will see it on the example right away. So when you generate the point cloud classification, you will see the point cloud color coded like how you see it on the right screenshot. So you see that the building has been classified and it uh, has the color purple, for example. When you generate the point cloud classification, if you have already processed step two, then don't worry, you can also do it from the process menu. So you will not have to process step two again. Simply you go to process, run point cloud classification. Then you should also process step three to have your DTM. To generate the DTM, the DSM should be generated and the, the tiles should be merged. You will see in Pix4D that when you go to select your DTM, the resolution will automatically set to five times the GST. And as Andrea said, this is the resolution that we figure out who provides the best results. How we do the contour lines? In Pix4D software, you also have the opportunity to export contour lines based on your DSM or your DTM depending what you have selected. So as you see here in the screenshots, on the left side, I haven't selected my DTM. As you can see on the option here, it is not selected. And then on the bottom, you see that the contour lines will be based on the DSM. On the right side, you see that I have selected the DTM, so I can generate my contour lines based on the DTM. What are my options for the contour lines? I can set the contour base, in this case it's zero, and this is the zero of the output coordinate system. I can set the interval. In this case, in both cases, I will have contour lines every 10 meters generated. I can, have the, I can set the resolution of the contour lines, and this is the resolution of the DSM or the DTM, depending what I have selected as input. And I can also define the minimum number of vertices that the contour line will have. So as you will see here, for instance, on the example on the left and on the right, some of the contour lines have been eliminated since the minimum line size is 30. Uh, when you generate the contour lines, you will find them stored in the results folder in this path here. And uh, depending what options you have, you will have multiple contour lines generated. You will see the extension DTM or DSM depending what you have selected as base. 
remember, if you process your project again with the same settings, the results will be overwritten. If, this, if you want to keep them, just keep a backup aside. If you have different options, then they will be generated uh, under the, the first options. We have a lot of material in our support web page, so I also encourage you to have a look there. If you're interested in the point cloud classification, there is also the scientific paper that we published, and you can have a look in the support website as well. But let's see now how we do this in the software. So here I have my picks for this software. I have processed the project that Andrea just showed you, and I have run all steps just to facilitate a bit the presentation. So as you will see here, I have my densified point cloud in the screen. Here is my project. How do I run the, the point cloud classification? I simply go to processing options. I select set two. And where you will see the point cloud, you have the options you can set. And here, point cloud classification. You will see a small note, improves the DTM generation. We highly recommend that you classify the point cloud if you want to have an accurate DTM generated. I ensure that the option is selected. I see if I want to export something different. I click OK. I select set two and click Start. I have processed it already now. Just to show you, in case you have it processed, but you forgot to select the point cloud classification, you can simply go to Process menu and go for um, yes, Run Point Cloud Classification. It's just here. Perfect. How will the result look like? So you will see here on the left sidebar, I have my classes. If you haven't run the point cloud classification and you click show class color, everything will be white. Now that we have it processed, you will see that my point cloud is col colored. What every color shows, you can see it on the left. If you wish to generate a new category, let's say you would like to add, for example, a new point group called water, this will be colored as white. So these colors here are predefined. We have selected the color. So I will go a bit back and forth just to show you for the point cloud classification. So you see here we have a buildings. I just confirm a bit by uh, removing the color. And here I have them again. I see that we, I have the road, I have the parking, seems to be classified correctly. The cars are in the human-made objects, the buildings are purple, my road is gray. I see here that there are a few things that are not classified properly. And this is normal because our algorithm has been trained with label data uh, based on the geometry and the color. So sometimes, for example, in this case, it could happen that some objects confuse the algorithm. Here I can show you, we have the greenhouses that you see them, they are gray and they're also very close to the ground. So the algorithm is also a bit confused if there are human-made objects, ground, building, but this is okay. Don't worry if this happens to you. You can simply edit the point cloud and assign them to the correct category. Let me show you how you can do this. So I click this edit densified point cloud and let's say I want to improve the building here that is not fully purple. Then I will select a region even a bit outside the points, or depending how, how small this area is, you can always do it more uh, fine. You can adjust it as you prefer. I right click to close it. You see it's red. I select the category, in this case is building, and I assign. When I am done, I close it. So I click again the edit, and you see now it's been correctly classified. I will show you a few more of these. The same is the case here as well. These are the greenhouses. Let's say you want to classify all of it in the building category, for example. I will do the same thing. I will select an area. I will not do it all here, so we don't uh, really spend time. I select, I choose the category I would like this to be assigned, and I click Assign. I remove from, my, from the editing mode. Don't forget to save your project, save project. And now you will go to run your DTM. Let's see from the beginning how we're going to do our DTM. So I have process step one and two. Now is, my, is the time to do the DTM. I go to step three. To generate the DTM, the DSM should be selected, should be processed. So ensure that you have the raster DSM selected and the merge styles option. The DTM, you can find it in the additional outputs. You will see here raster DTM. It also gives you a hint, use the point cloud classification to have better results. 
you select the GTIF, merge styles, OK. I select step three now and click start. I have it processed already before the edits, so let me show you how it looks like. In Pix4D software, you can visualize your DSM and your DTM and the mosaic in the mosaic editor. So when I go to the mosaic editor, I can see my ortho mosaic. I can see my DSM. As we said, all the information is color coded here. So you see the greenhouses, you see the buildings, you see the elevation. And for the DTM, I see how my digital terrain model look like. In this case, you notice that here I have some uh, elevation differences, although I wouldn't really expect it for the digital terrain model. But this is normal, as we said, since, let me go back to the point cloud, we notice that some of the points were not properly classified. In this case, what I will do, I will simply uh, finish my edits and then I will go to process and then click generate DTM. If you haven't processed step three, then you should just uh, process step three as we showed before. Here I have it already processed, so I have to go from the process menu. For the contour lines, the contour lines uh, cannot be visualized in Pix4D software, but you can use any other platform, any GIS uh, platform to visualize and also uh, add labels on it. Uh, there are many users asking, how can I set a label on the contour lines? You can import it in a GIS, QGIS, for example, and then you can adjust the properties uh, layer. It's very simple. So for the contour lines, they're always uh, there on step three in the additional outputs label. And then here on the bottom, you will see uh, contour lines generated. Here you can export in shapefile, PDF, DXF, and you can adjust the settings. Here, because I have selected the DTM on the, on the above, I need to, um, to see if I'm, I'm correct or not. So if I don't want the DTM, I want the DSM, I need to simply remove it. And now you see the contour lines will be generated from the DSM. If you have already processed step three, like it's the case for me here as well, then you can simply do it from the process menu. You can generate contour lines from the DSM and from the DTM. Be careful here, before you generate them, you need to adjust the settings. So if, for example, I want here to have every, every seven meters contour lines with a resolution of, uh, let's say, I don't know, 300 centimeters, I need to click OK, and then I go to the process menu and I generate the contour lines from there. That's, that's all I wanted to show you for today. Uh, we're looking forward to hear your questions here with uh, Elena, our machine learning software engineer. This is waiting uh, to reply to any questions you might have. And I give the speech back to, back to Andrea. Thank you. And with this, uh, I think we finish our SenseFly Academy for today. Marily, did you have anything you wanted to add? Thank you very much, Andrea. It was very nice to do this with you here. Uh, no, I think you covered everything, every topic. You will find the references in the slides and uh, everything you want. Uh, if you have any problem with your project, don't hesitate to write to, to uh, submit a request to support. We are there for you. And thank you very much for attending. Thank you very much also from SenseFly side. Bye.